Yeah, it'll go quick. Hey, and we're live. Welcome, everybody. This is the Live at Epifan show. I'm George. And I'm Matt. Uh, today, we got a fun show. Hopefully, we, anyways. I think it's going to be a fun show because we've got lots of gear, and people always like it when we have stuff to talk about. So we have a big collection of cameras and switchers and lights and all this stuff on shelves, which we pull out and we play with, and we see what works and see what we like and kind of see what... The industry, where the industry is going in a lot of respects as well. So right. So just because we plug a lot of our own products doesn't mean we don't get to try other things to see what might or might not work, and also what might just be relevant in the industry right now. Yeah. So I'd call this mostly the kind of novelty, unusual cameras a little bit. Some of them are kind of niche in that way. So yeah, absolutely. We're gonna uh, unbox a few of them. We're gonna give you some sort of speed reviews, so to speak, and uh, then we're gonna get Matt's professional advice because Matt's part of the support team on what cameras he actually does recommend for you because some of these well we don't know yet so uh, and we have some other things we're going to talk about camera wise too after all of that so lots of camera talk today lots of good stuff yeah um, I've got chat open here and I'm looking for questions so if you have anything you want to talk about put it in the Facebook chat or put it in the YouTube chat and we'll talk about that in the meantime you can always give us a like on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube account always great to keep up to date with the things that are going on with Epifan or yeah. to keep up to date with our live show Mm -hmm. So how you been? I haven't you haven't been on the show in a little while. Where you been? Well, that's a that's a good point. I really haven't been here in probably a couple of months now. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it's good to, good to have you back on the show. Thank you. Yeah, I say most of the time I've probably been spending it uh, just supporting uh, a lot of our products, answering a lot of questions for you guys out there. Yes. Uh, a lot of questions that have been coming out have been Pearl Mini, so a lot of that's been uh, yeah. trying to to answer those questions as much as we can and provide the information that nice. we, as we possible. Like to that. <laughs> I was also at ISE in uh, February, which means I was in Amsterdam doing the trade show. And you've got another big show coming up, right? You're that's going true. to um, uh, Vegas. Yes. That's uh, uh, Infocom. Infocom. All right. So my first time uh, on the West Coast. I guess Ooh. mostly West Coast. It's in Nevada, right? So it's, it's nice there. Actually, it's going to be stinking hot. That's, that's that's my big worry. But uh, as far as I understand, uh, it's yeah. it's sand, so there's no humidity. Yeah, no, 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 it's still on, so That's nice. Yeah. yeah, so that's nice. Yeah. So what do we got today? Well, let me kick it off. Cool. First camera. This is the cutest of all the cameras. This is the Hudley. Hudley. So it's tiny, but you would expect it to be small because it's essentially a webcam. But it's a very nice webcam. And here it is. So why is this camera of interest to us in any way? Because it's a webcam that has a big sensor. So I think they said it has a CMOS sensor, 16 megapixels, something like that. Right. 2.8 aperture. And because it's a larger sensor, it's always going to have a little bit of better response in lower light situations, right? Yeah, I did test it in low light, and it did get a to do really well and typically that's where all cameras fail is in low light like every camera looks great in a nice sunny day when you go outside and take pictures with it your cell phone camera included yes and then as soon as you dim the lights and you try and do something at night you see the grain come out at you and then you're, you're des too. desperately trying to find the right filter to try yeah, and get yeah, rid yeah, of most yeah. of that so uh the first thing i do anytime i open up any camera is point it into the dark spot in my room and see how it performs and this does actually remarkably well Right. So I've, I'm seeing here, obviously, it's got this little stand so you can kind of yeah. like tilt, tilt it up, so to speak. But obviously, you can use it resting against a monitor or your laptop or something where it'll kind of close up and, and yeah. hold its mm -hmm. place, right? Its yeah. shape. And it is a, it's a USB web camera. So, you know, it's, typically it's going to be used in a conferencing or a collaborative kind of deal where you want right. to do something better than your camera's webcam, but you want a better image quality. Okay. Um, they do a, a really nice job on their design. Like, Lisa, I'll pull up their website here. You can see this company clearly cares about design because their packaging, their product feels really solid and rugged and nice and simple applications. And uh, it's still just a webcam. Right. But I noticed that it also does have like almost like a fisheye looking lens on there. Yeah, right? it has a huge 150 degree angle. So when you first put it on, it's like it looks like a GoPro image. Right. And then, but it does come with this. Uh, this app that lets you do like basic pan tilt control uh, options with it. Right. So, sorry, not tilt. Pan, pan zoom. Yeah, I cannot pan tilt. <laughs> but yeah, virtual pan and zoom so I can point this camera at you, get a nice shot, and then get your nose just like the, that. This beautiful all, nose shot. All the way shot, up the nose, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> that's how we end up doing it all the time every time we do our Skype calls. So, Perfect. Yeah, it, we could fix that with that. <laughs> uh, here we go. We got some comments. 
Someone's looking for an in inexpensive, simple HDMI switcher for my webcaster with no delay and clean video. Guess what? Hermos Latube. We are too. Uh, that's something that we've been looking for as well. And I think there might be, if we talk to Marta uh, on our team, she might have some kind of a switcher option. So we'll ask Marta to throw it in the chat here if she does, and she can let us know about it. But uh, I know getting a clean switcher that doesn't have any kind of a delay between switches right. doesn't come cheap. Right? No, yeah, no, not typically. You're looking to spend at the very least. Thousand bucks, probably, something like yeah, that? Yeah, around that. But I, I wonder, well, anyway, we'll see what Marta has to say. Hopefully she's watching. She told me she was going to, so we'll see. And you guys can always ask <laughs> questions. We have a community forum that's available on our website as well, so by all means, you guys can always ask yeah. questions there. Um, other people, other, other cons customers in the industry might be able to say, hey, I've been using this, it's working out really great, and it's only costing, you know, three, four hundred dollars. It's not perfect, but it might work. Yeah. Yeah, you do see that in a forum. It's great. Martin's compliment. She's already online, complimenting our wardrobe department as if we had one. That, that's lovely. Uh, Henrika Isusa, we all know how to do a live stream with three, five, or ten k budget. The problems to do a nice live stream with a two, one or two thousand dollars. And you're totally right. We get those kind of questions more often than any on this show. How do I do? you know, a great production on a low budget. So some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, like this camera and other cameras, might be able to help you in that direction. So. Um, yeah, and we have just another comment here. Hello, which open source components, libraries, and software are you using in your products like Webcaster X2 and Perl Mini? That's a good question. Kind of a deep dive into what libraries we use. I know we use like FFmpeg. Well, I mean, we're using the UBC libraries for our AVIO UBC product libraries. line. So that's, that's the big thing. Yeah. I don't um, think we post it anywhere publicly, but if you have a specific question about like a certain component in a library, maybe you could email support and Matt, I mean, or I can one certainly of his colleagues answer. could answer you, like, if you want to figure out how to use some aspect of the API or Perl or whatnot. Yeah, you guys can always just email info yeah. at epifan.com. That'll reach us at supports, and if it's a sales-related question or something, we'll make sure it gets, gets to the right person yeah. to help you out. So that's our first little camera. Souped up, uh, fancy <laughs> webcam. Low, low light, applicable. And a cute box. And a cute box. Uh, 500 bucks, too, so it's expensive. That, wow, that is expensive. For it's a very expensive webcam, but I, I got, don't know. I got another. I got another relatively expensive one to show after. Um, can we talk about the big one over here? Yeah, we got a, a right. big ungangly thing. So I got to play with this one a little bit. This is the uh, Marantz turret, um, as it's blocking me completely. There we go. Um, so it's a very cool little kind of like an all-in-one little setup here. So essentially got a USB-based webcam up top with a lighting rig that's available, including an extendable boom for a microphone. Cool. Uh, the microphone on the bottom actually has a, a, a pad that's available for minus 10 dB, which is kind of handy. Um, so it, in terms of like, I would see the setup being mostly for, for video streamers, those that are kind of like, that either want to do gaming or they just want to talk about, you know, yeah. you know, in real life what's going on in their world. They want to talk about maybe uh, projects that are going on in terms of crafting or writing or just kind of like a... So vloggers, podcasters, that kind of thing. People oh. sitting at a desk doing something, right? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, is a, it is a great little tool and it's, it's relatively inexpensive, probably around the $300 range, which yeah, is great if you're so. first starting out, right? So if we're talking about um, the the... the question from earlier there um, about trying to do something in the 1 to 2K range. Depending yeah, you on wouldn't do an event is. with that, but no. if you're a blogger or something, that, that's kind of kind of nice. Right. It's great because it's, uh, it's an H.264 encoding a uh, little 1080p or, or style camera with a little bit of compression. Uh, there is adjustable lighting that's available on this. I don't know if Lisa, if we can do that little zoom in there, could just show a little bit of the controls. If I can center that a little bit. Um, so we'll notice here that there is a knob here, this should be for the, the lighting that's available, right? So the LEDs that are at the top, you'll be able to adjust the, the brightness you want to use. Uh, toggle on and off the camera and the microphone, so this would be a mute and turn it on or off completely. Uh, here's an interesting little feature here that we see, it's called a mix. So between the two, you can either have all of your audio on that are available on the headphones as either the microphone or the computer, or you can have a mixture of both. So say for example, you want to uh, do some gaming but you don't want to have any audio going through your speakers because you want to be able to hear it through your headphones. Uh, okay, so you can mix it right on it. Right, so basically the audio from the computer will go out into this actual unit, and then you can do a mix so that you can hear your gaming, your gameplay or your, your content or your music or whatever you're doing, as well as the microphone content as yeah, well. They, they seem, I'm looking at their webpage right now, and they seem to market clearly towards the gamer, conferencing, um, blogger yeah. crowd. So it's kind of cool just because you know you can... You can tw turn it, you can 
raise yeah. it up or down. It's also made by Marantz, which is interesting because you didn't know Marantz, but I grew no, up I with didn't. like Marantz amplifiers and record players and stuff like that. So I've they've been around forever. I had no idea they were in this space at all, but I guess they have the good audio piece, so they just tacked on a camera and a. Yeah. Yeah. So the only yeah. the only concern that I have is the, all this boom is great because it can move in directions horizontally. Uh, it can't move up or down. So you risk having one of two things happen. One, you're going to have the microphone in the shot uh, for most of the time. Or two, it's going to be just out of the shot. But chances are you're not going to have that perfect audio that you need because you won't right. be facing it directly. It's pretty cool looking. It's weird. It's weird as hell because it's just not like anything else. And like a lot of things, it's one of these things that tries to do a bunch of things well and probably does all of them okay, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, cool. Thank you. Let's You're talk welcome. about the next one. All right. Let's get this one out of the table. What brand is it? Someone else. We got some more questions here. Uh, they're talking about, oh, they're talking about that switcher again, and Martin's wondering what brand it is. So hopefully the comments will take care of that kind of, that aspect of the show, and uh, I'll pull out another camera. Cool. <clears throat> so this probably the oldest camera on the block here. It's like a couple of years old. This is the Mevo. Most of you probably know about the Mevo already. In fact, what it is is this is the Mevo with uh, a battery extender. And this is a all-in-one streaming product. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can do a lot with it. Like, it's kind of like our webcaster in that we say you can just go to a show with it and need very little equipment and just do a live stream. Right. Um, I, I played around with it this after, or yesterday, and uh, it's nice in that it has a nice app for doing great control, and you can do uh, cropping and, and uh, switching shots all from one camera. So you make one large scene with your right. camera, and I can do all these punch outs of different shots. Oh, that's kind of cool. And you can set it to automate, automatically do switching, so it'll sort of take its best guess on which shot it could show. Uh, it has some pretty big limitations too and that it, it it's a small camera you're gonna have to get pretty close to your subject you're not gonna put this at the back of the room or anything like that right I assume this I assume if there is a zoom it's not gonna be the most fantastic exactly zoom it's gonna planet. degrade quickly but uh, it's it's gonna be for people who want to do really s small scale events or uh, meetings and functions and that kind of thing where they want to do live streaming and they're not technical they want something that's like super low tech right this is gonna be a nice product for that uh, the cameras Okay, it's not great, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, uh, and it, but it's pretty, and I think it's pretty cheap. Did I get a price on this one? Uh, I don't have the price on it, but anyway. Well, I think I think it probably it's hard, it's a little bit diff more difficult to price because you know you've also got the accessory here, which is not yeah doesn't it come comes immediately in two parts. It, right? Yeah, I've i I've, I've talked to customers about this, and I'll, I hear a lot of grief about it. Right. I can't speak to it when I worked it when I used it. It seemed okay, but I didn't really do a real event to it but with it. But I have heard a lot of people who kind of gripe about it. But anyway, it's nice looking. You can say that. It, it's. I mean, at least at least it's a solid like yeah. handle for yeah. you to walk yeah. around. If you with had it. to beat. I mean, you know. I, th I think the I think the biggest thing I'd worry about is you're trying to do a show and someone's go. Oh yeah, and I'd like to thank. <laughs> that's, it, that's, it is rather my. That's not yeah. what it's for. Yeah. But you can. It does have a mount in the bottom. So you can oh, prop okay. it in, so. Set it up in a room. That works out. Uh, Henrique is telling people he wants to do a live stream with guests and interviews on my music studio. I need two or three cameras and we'll probably stream at 720p. Henrique, why don't you check out the Pearl Mini? Maybe the, I don't know if that's within your budget, but. Take a look at it. It's a, t a nice thing for a couple of sources. So, um, what else have we got? We got more cameras. You've well, got one. I've got uh, oh the right. little guy. Yeah. yeah. So this guy, uh, which I said was kind of similar as our as our hardly little camera there, um, in some regards. Uh, this was the the Razer webcam. So Razer yeah. is that company that's uh, most prominently known to do uh, gaming rigs, gaming that kind of thing, right? right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, typically it would be keyboards, mice, that kind of thing. Um, so this is kind of cool. A little bit more on the pricier side. I believe this one ranges around two hundred dollars, give yeah. or take. But it's kind of nice because it has a built-in light uh, that you can actually. So it's connected to and powered over USB, and you can twist the uh, the uh, the outskirts, or I guess the side of it, uh, and this will change the light temperature and uh, brightness oh, cool. a little bit. So it will at make, the same time, like in conjunction. Yep, in conjunction, right? So it just assumes okay. that the lower light you're going to want a little bit softer warmer. and that kind of thing, a little yeah. bit warmer. Um, Overall, it's a, it's a pretty decent webcam. It can it can do 1080p. Uh, it works well in in light, and even in with no lights, no other lights in the room. As long as you've got yeah. this thing set to completely bright, you're still able to see yourself probably at about a um, two foot distance from from the webcam itself, uh, and you kind of start to lose some of that definition there yeah. behind you. So there will be a little bit of you know graininess and the darkness around, um, as well. Of course, the same idea is that you can 
tilt it accordingly if you need to. Um, or you, can you mount it on? Oh, it's got oh absolutely, absolutely. Shelf here, prop it up on your uh, computer. Okay. It's the other thing too is it's very weighty. It's a very heavy webcam, right? Nice. So it, it's it's basically not going to go anywhere. I like how it all folds up and just tidy a little yeah. sandwich. It's great. I just wish the cable. Oh, and it has a 3.5 uh, mount on the bottom too. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's awesome. So a couple of nice little webcams. Um, Martin's asking about what do we think about the Q and the Zoom Q and two camera, and I think that thing is awesome. There's also a Zoom Q four or something like yeah, that. That's my personal favorite. And it's basically a little uh, handheld camera, but it has Pro Audio uh, XL X, X and Y X and Y inputs in it. So if you want like a small camera with decent audio, which is kind of impossible. It's like the, it's one of the only things you're going to find for that. No, absolutely, and yes, it's like basically like getting a good a good, good GoPro with decent audio on it, right? Right, because they use, are an audio company after. Yeah, all. and you can do it as a stereo pair. You can do it in, independently, right? So you yeah. can connect other microphones. It doesn't have to be the one that's included um, with the, the the camera itself. So you independent gain controls if you're doing two separate sources. Yeah, um, but our friend Scott, who's often on the show here, he I know he he posted some pictures of his kit and he was using the Zoom Zoom Q2, I think. Q2, yeah, the Q2 is great. And uh, so yeah, I'm keen on it. And George, who's often sitting where you are, it, it gets all excited when we talk about the Zoom cameras. So yeah, yeah, uh, we've got some other questions here. Uh, I'm glad to see models with built-in ring lights. It does make things easier. Yeah, uh, we like even on our. Our cinema cameras, we sometimes stick a little light on top just for impromptu stuff. It's super helpful. Yeah, it also helps uh, keep your costs down, right? If you're trying to invest into any sort of little studio or little rig setup that you're going to either oh, yeah, be yeah. mobile on mobile or at home or some sort of vlogging yeah. scenario, it just and you get those nice people with glasses. You get the nice. Oh yeah, the like, nice little halos. Yeah, the little halos. Um, Carlos is asking if Pearl Mini is available for purchase. It is uh, shipping in June. Uh, yeah. Check out your local dealer, and you can find it there. Yeah, so we have a where to buy page available. So you see buy options, and you'll see the yeah. local store and, uh, and and the dealer's availability. Yeah. Uh, Stefan is asking, can you list all the cameras into the description of the video later? Yes, we will. Absolutely. And we also have another list that you can check out, which, Lisa, if you pull up my computer here, I'll show you. Yeah, it so is on the forum, and this is a list of cameras we have tested with our equipment. Or the and customers have reported it works. Yeah, so it's not like a hardcore testing uh, list where we put them through the paces, but we can anecdotally say, yeah, they kind of work or they don't work. So uh, a yeah. nice reference guide for people who want to find out compatibility with our equipment, at least. Absolutely. So just keep in mind when you're looking at that list, it's not all these cameras are suddenly working, right? You have the, it'll, it's all the cameras that we have tested or the customers have reported that work uh, or don't work. Yeah. So it'll tell you yes or no, it'll work with Webcaster. And or it'll yes tell or you, no, it's ideal for Stefan's it. asking, cameras with clean HDMI out. Uh, yes, it specifically lists that because that's the kind of thing, like, every time I'm looking for it, like I hear about a new camera, we're going to talk about some other cameras in a minute, I always go right to the spec page and I say, what is the out HDMI out capabilities on it? Because it seems to be the least publicized aspect of cameras. They just say, yeah, it does HDMI out. We're going to dig into that in more detail in a little bit. Absolutely. So again, this is the community forum page. So if you go to epifan.com along the yeah. top, you'll see community forum. Uh, the easiest way to find that, if it's not readily available, it's under webcasters section of the community forum, and it's cameras that play nice with webcaster. That's where you'll find that yeah. specific list. Henrik is interested in Pearl 2. He's waiting for an answer. Well, uh, we'll follow up on this. I'll make sure somebody gets in touch with you afterwards, Henrik. Um, Henrique. Uh, Dan Wallace, some guy from Chicago, says hi. Hi, Dan. Um, and Stefan is asking about Pearl Mini prices. Uh, we don't talk about specifically about the Pearl Mini prices. We leave that up to our dealers to, to, to set the price on Pearl Mini. So if you Google it and find a local dealer in your neighborhood, you'll be able to find Pearl Mini pricing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's our comments. We're caught up on comments. Cool, sounds good. But I wanted to ask you, so you're our support guy. You yes. get people calling you all the time. We've been talking about a bunch of sort of oddball cameras. What are the cameras you do recommend to people? So a lot of people are usually asking about uh, what's a, what's a good camera for like you know if you're just starting out you don't want to spend like hundreds of thousands of dollars so right. something that's kind yeah. of like uh, that'll give me good quality but still keep my costs down so one of the common ones that we've used and we've had three or four running yeah. around the studio uh, is the Canon G20. Do we have one here? Or no? Um, no. I don't know if we have one with right. us. We so it's basically a little camcorder, right? Yeah, a little camcorder with a little flip-out screen that's available. Yeah, those ones seem to be fairly reliable in terms of decent HDMI out and. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So the, the one thing to keep in mind, of course, is you know if you've got, so like the G20, it's got that HDMI output on the side, so you want to be cautious of that, right? So if the more strain you put on any sort of 
plug or adapter is, the more more likely you are to cause any sort of damage. Yeah, we've had to send those in to get repaired. HDMI, it's funny. It's so everywhere, and it's awesome in some ways, but man, it's a pain. Like, we were, I was at NAB recently and trying to do sh shots with it, and every time I move, I'm worried my HDMI cable is going to come out. So, yeah. Could somebody please reinvent HDMI with a locking mechanism, like a SDI input? That'd be awesome. Um, but so one of the other cameras people always ask us about. Oh look, there's a Canon G. What is it? 920. G yeah, Geraldine to the rescue. Thank you so nice. much. So there we go. This is so one, one of, of our go-tos for any kind of live streaming. Uh, I can just put that on the table there. Yeah. So I come from a world of like video and photography and stuff. So I'm always excited about SLRs. And when I first came here, I thought, oh, that's great. We can get a 5D and we can do all this stuff and do stuff with SLRs. And then I find out quickly that they're not always the best choice for. Uh, live video. Well, why is that? So the biggest thing is, you know, if you take a video and you record that onto your camera, when you play it back, you'll get the video and the audio, no problem. But there is a, a substantial amount of, of cameras that are out there on the market for, for DSLRs, SLRs, that kind of thing, where they will provide you the video feed, but not the audio oh, live, so yes. on standby, yeah. right? One of the easiest ways you can actually test that is if you connect HDMI out directly to like a television, obviously You'll something hear. that has speakers. Yeah. If you hear audio, great, yeah. that means you're gonna have uh, you know audio pass through on, on standby, which means you can use it for streaming yeah. um, or, or any sort of method like that. So you can use it with that webcaster or if any of those software programs, if you're using AVIO with OBS or something of that nature. So SLRs can be kind of funny that way. You said there were certain brands that you that tend to be better. Yeah. So so out of the ones that I've tried, I've noticed that uh, like Nikon and Sony seem to be really good at outputting live audio over yes. HDMI um, and clean and clean. HDMI, which Stefan was mentioning. Canon, on the other hand, I haven't yet to find a success with the DSLR camera where you're actually getting audio. Really? I've wow. seen. I've Even seen like the five D. No, nope, just wow, straight okay. video. I haven't heard any audio that goes through it. Not on live. So again, if you're doing recorded video playback, you'll get the audio through and through. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I found with shooting with SLRs is they sometimes power cycle and crap out. Like they'll run for 40 minutes and then they power off for you. So they don't always right. like being run continuously for four hours or something like that. Uh, so we have a right now we're shooting with a Sony A6300, which is a little micro four thirds, and we found that if we put a, if we actually take out the batteries and put in a constant power supply yep. to that, that seemed to resolve that issue. But in the past, I know we've had a, we've had a trouble with them. Yeah. Also, keep in mind, guys, there are some cameras, some DSLR cameras that get very hot when you're using them on video mode or something for an extended oh, yeah, period of time. So yeah. you also have to be mindful of that. Uh, you know, like if you're gonna go, if you're looking to buy a DSLR or any sort of camcorder, spend some time in the store. Go in with the intent going, I'm gonna be using it for this and then try, and I know it can be really annoying and frustrating at times, but try to spend a decent amount of time just in the store, having it run, trying to get it to do exactly what you want. It'll yeah. give you a good idea if it's gonna, it's you know, be mm -hmm. helpful or cumbersome in the real world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have an, there's another style of camera. Yeah, I want to see this one. I haven't seen this one in a while. Well, this is what we most often shoot the show with, which is a cine camera, I'd call it, which is effectively an SLR on video steroids because it has a nice handheld and decent audio input. And in this case, it seems to have no trouble with the HDMI output. It's nice and clean and works great. So right. this is the kind of cameras that get me going but these are also like the far more expensive than any of the cameras we've been talking about today. So I think when I bought this, it was about five grand. Maybe it's three grand now. I don't know. But right. I know there's a new one, a uh, Canon C200 or something like that. It's about six or eight grand. Right. So this that is I'm the C100 Mark II, correct? Yeah, this is the Mark II. And okay. I know you said the Mark I is kind of sketchy, well, right? The, the Mark I, as far as, I, as, as far as from all the testing that we've done, I've heard, all the comments we've heard back is the Mark I actually only puts uh, an interlaced video source over HDMI. Uh. So, which which can be very frustrating, um, because interlace is a little bit of an older technology. Yeah. It's, I know it's still used a lot in the broadcast environment, but progressive, I just find, gives you a, a overall yeah. greater video, mm -hmm. right? Michael Graves is saying that he uses Canon DSLRs. They must run Magic Lantern to run continuously. Then they will overheat. Uh, and Liz is mentioning she also had overheating issues with the Canon. So, seems like we're not alone in this uh, uh, world of overheating SLRs. Uh, NYU Biology is asking, is there a camera that handles a bright projection screen and presenter who is not well lit? Now that is a tall order. And some of the cameras we talked about today, like this little Hudley, it will do automatic light. Uh, so if I suddenly pointed at a, a bright window, it'll yeah. suddenly get darker. And if I point it into the shadows, it'll try and brighten that up. So it'll try to compensate for those. And other ones will call it like backlight right, correction yeah. and stuff. But ultimately, none of them can really 
fix it. Uh, if someone is not poorly light and they're in front of a screen that is really bright, right? It, there's just it doesn't really exist to be able to make me if I'm dark look great and that screen look well. Except for if you use something like HDR, uh, which we've been talking a lot about here because we were at NAB and HDR was everywhere, and we haven't really seen. HDR enter the workflow that we're talking about, this kind of OTT workflow too much yet. Right. But that's something that could conceivably help a shot where you have someone who's very poorly lit in the front and really behind a, a presentation at the back. So uh, not a great answer for you. I know you wanted to, a camera that could do that for you and you can experiment with different ones and certainly get a bigger image sensor on a, a nicer quality camera. You'll get better dynamic range, but it's not gonna fix it, but it, you'll get improved results. Uh, just to touch base really quickly back with one of those first comments that we had today. Uh, it, when you're talking about trying to keep a setup under you know thousand, two thousand dollars, if you're going to be in a, an enclosed studio environment, you want to make sure that you know as, as much as you're also investing in your equipment, lighting is hugely important to be able to get a good shot. Yeah. Even if you have a mediocre camera, lighting can make a difference, like all the difference in the world. Yeah, it can fix it. Crappy camera. Uh, and Ron tells us that there actually is a locking full-size HDMI connector, but he says it's not great either. What I don't get is how it locks. Like I don't have a mechanism here to have any kind of lock on my HDMI, so I'd be curious to know how that works. And so maybe after this, I'll go Google legit locking HDMI connectors. Although I'm, I'm, I'm opening it up to the world. I mean, if you guys want to reinvent what the HDMI plug is altogether, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and so that it becomes the media or the, the, the industry standard for every camera, video, source, and such on the market. So Stefan is looking for more budget cameras. So Stefan, check out that list that we put up on the forum. And there's a bunch yep. that are like, I don't know, under $500 is going to be not great. $500, $2,000, is tons of great uh, camcorders and such that you can yeah. use. And then we've got the far, far end of the spectrum, you know, when you're spending the tens of thousands of dollars. Like, uh, RED makes a lot of uh, cameras like that. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about a, a, another camera that was at some point that was, was new. Oh, yeah, there's this. I actually pulled it up on the web page because I was looking at it earlier. This is another thing that we saw at NAB. And this is the new Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Now, what's interesting here, what's most interesting, is that I think it's like 1300 bucks, and that is a 4K raw uh, cinema camera. Wow. Now, okay. it's, I'm, I, I, we've played around with a bit about black magic, sorry, a bit of black magic stuff, and we found that to make them functional, you have to tack on a lot of stuff, and so that $1,200 price tag can go up quickly. Oh, okay. When so you need to those... buy batteries and handholds and ND filters and, and, monitor, and other uh, like rigging and stuff like that and monitors. Actually, the monitor is a five inch monitor on that. Oh, okay, that's good. It's fixed, so you can't tilt it. But uh, in any case, this is a very interesting camera, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these out in the field simply because they're cheap and they use uh, four thirds lenses. And yeah. four thirds lenses are generally more affordable, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of them out there. So, very intriguing camera uh, for people wanting to do live video. Now is this available spend. yet or is it coming soon? Can no, it's not available. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if any of you guys end up getting this camera before we get a chance to ever try one out, yeah. we'd love to hear your feedback on the camera. Send it to us. Sure, we'll do that too. We'll test I, it on I the like show. free stuff. Yeah. You can come on the show with us and you can tell us all about it. No, he, he's right. We would love to know all about it. Um, thanks for everybody commenting in the, in the uh, the comment, the chat on YouTube has been very busy today, so it's nice to see everybody chatting about uh, getting excited about cameras because I know that's kind of a softball for us around here. Once we start talking cameras, we got people coming out from their offices all over because there's a lot of camera buffs around here. Yeah, of course. So yeah, people are excited about the Black Magic camera and other things. So um, Henrique is saying that he doesn't think the world of streaming is ready, and you know what? <laughs> You're we're always chasing the eight ball. So right now it feels like we're ready, but then like we still haven't got HDR. Going yep, full no, full bore yet. We don't have 4K coming yet. We don't see HEVC everywhere yet. So there's always like four other technologies that we're still chasing. So he's right, but it kind of makes it fun for us. So and you guys, if you if you guys are interested in actually streaming in 4K, you guys need a massive available bandwidth to do that. You're you're upping your game significantly. In, in yeah, we did not need, touch right? on so. the processing side of, of streaming today. We strictly kept it to cameras. So. Uh, but you're right, that's another kettle of fish. Like people talking about trying to get switchers for a budget. And so maybe that's another show we should do on the, like how to set up a budget live stream and we can give you the, what we think is the best $500 live stream and the best $1,000 live stream. And maybe we could even crank out a 
$300 live streaming kit. Who knows? That's actually not a bad idea. Um, if you guys have got ideas for the show, if you yeah. guys have any questions, suggestions, point of course, you know, drop drop us a comment uh, either on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our channel and, of course, like our Facebook page. It always helps. Yeah. So I think that's about it. We talked a lot about cameras. That's good. I feel better. Good. And uh, if, if you guys need to do, need, a, need or want another audio segment at some point, of course, let us know. I'd be happy to fill yeah, in. Yeah, Matt's an audio guy. And this, his heart, he's support on the outside, but he's audio all inside. So. And, and your, your video all inside. Yeah, that's true. I don't even hear and, you right now. And you're, and you're fish on the outside. And I'm fishy, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for watching the show today. Thanks to Lisa for producing it, and thanks to everybody for commenting. Uh, great to have you all here, and we'll be back here next week at 3 o'clock. See you See later. You